Uh, let's add Kristen Bitterly of City Global Wealth into the conversation now. So let's just pick off. It's nice to see you and welcome. Thank let's you. Let's just Good pick to see off you. where we left off with with AP and just on tech at first. Yeah. I mean, how do you view the run that we've seen to start the year? It's stalled a little bit in the last few days. What do you think from here? So I don't really buy this argument that tech is this defensive play and that it's a flight to quality. When you look at the returns year to date, very, very strong. But when you look at them on a prior 12 month basis, it's retraced about half of the sell offs that we saw last year. I think the other thing is when you look at the flows coming into tech, it's really concentrated in a couple of names. Really 20 names are driving the majority of the equity rally that we've seen. And so this isn't something that's broad based. It is something that is very concentrated. It is favoring large over small for sure. So I think we have to be careful about using that broad brush when we say tech is rallying. It's really a few idiosyncratic examples but of what's we, driving it. But if we used those idiosyncratic examples, those are, would you agree, viewed more defensively than other parts of tech? If we I take think that's the fair. mega caps. Yeah, I think that's fair because like within any sector, when you start to break it down and you say, OK, who has strong free cash flow generation, who's resilient in terms of recessionary or contractionary environments, there are going to be examples of that within the tech industry that have really cleaned up their balance sheet over the past couple of years and took advantage of the low, historically low interest rate environment that obviously is not the case right now. So they're well prepared for if, the environment that we're coming into. If you had to put yourself in a camp of, is it, you know, correct? to be bullish, more bullish, or correct to be more bearish, what, what would you say? I have to be on the defensive side here. I think it's correct to be. There's more downside, particularly. Obviously, we're talking about the equity market. But when you, we started the year at City Global Wealth with our outlook for 2023, saying not to fight the Fed, and that the impact of all of this cumulative tightening was going to have an impact on consumers, on corporations, on corporate earnings. And so we believe that we're going to see a contraction of earnings of upwards of about 10 percent. When you have this environment of rising rates, quantitative tightening, what happened within the banking system and stress is there, that means tighter credit conditions. The idea is that there's only going to be a few isolated examples of companies under stress or actually with compressed earnings, I think is a far shot. So I think we have downside to equities from here. So if so you're looking more like two hundred dollars if you think ten percent slightly higher than that. Yeah. Or? Yeah. In that ballpark. Now, Absolutely. What, what would you say to those who say you see bitterly Parker? They're so negative. Everybody is negative. I mean, I got that back at me today. I, I, and that's that's the reason why I, I can't be what, negative. What Everybody's say, what negative. I would say to that is if I walk in the room and every person thinks I'm ugly, that doesn't make me handsome. OK, I, I mean, honestly, it's not just I, I'm going to romanticize. I'm always a contrarian to everything all the time. Like sometimes the reality and the data suggest you should be more cautious directionally. And this is one of and those times. I think that's one of those, this one of those times. I mean, a lot of people I know, they have to beat the market no matter what. They're fully invested long only. Sure, we give them ideas of how to beat it in the growth sliver are the things I like more than others. Yes, I think you can maybe take a shot at small cap software where some of them grow gross profit and there's a bit of an acquisitive you know, element to, to some of the private equity firms looking at public equities. I can maybe say biotech, less economically sensitive than technology. I totally agree with, with Kristen that there are, there are economically sensitive businesses in tech, advertising, consumer, et cetera, that are likely to slow and there may not be a soft landing for their earnings, particularly in semiconductors where there's a lot of inventory. Mm -hmm. But maybe biotech, you know, I don't know, I forget what the number was in 2008. I think. Um, you know, Botox is down like 1% or something. <laughs> like it's a little, there's some drugs in that are a little, little less economically sensitive. So I could argue estimate achievability is a little better than healthcare, than tech, and in the economically sensitive part. I mean, you got to find your way through the investment ideas, but I don't see anybody could say, well, prices are up, therefore earnings are better. I think, you, I think you also have to look at the fact that, so when we say that we're defensive and that we do see some downside in terms of the index level of equities, it does not mean that we're not fully invested. We are fully invested. We're overweight fixed income relative to equities with a very strong quality bias. So we're participating in some of this activity, but you really have to pick your spots. And I go back to, Adam said this a little bit earlier, I go back to this concept of the Fed and what the Fed is looking at is actually lagging indicators. Their benchmarks are around inflation and employment, and those are lagging. When you look at the leading indicators and all of the data that we received this week, whether it was manufacturing, services, jolts, even what OPEC did in terms of you could make an argument that that's really trying to forecast demand destruction, sure. you have to actually pay attention to some of those signs and the ones that are telling you where the economy is going. What if I said to you, okay, I agree with all of that, which is even more reason why the Fed's going to cut and that's positive. 
How I think there's would, a moment in time that? when bad news is bad news, right? And then all of a sudden it is pivoting. So one thing is this discussion of what is the Fed going to do at the next meeting? We have a lot of data. We have tomorrow, obviously, not mm -hmm. tomorrow. I'm, I'm yeah, jumping Friday. a day. Friday. 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 And then we have CPI, right? So we have that data. And then we have Q1 earnings, which are really important.